amashishina sakulayo i SMMEs adlala indima enkulu ekudalonuka mathuba emisebenzi e Eastern Cape nanku usomikazi zulu ungumzekelo Zekolo is business because uh, want, I wanted to generate imani uh, within our community. I wanted to employ young people. Um, must by the way, one thing like oven and milk bath. It used to bake cake one um, at a time. Now I can basically bake six cakes at a time. So it's been you know, it took a load off my shoulders. This is going to change the business so much and Diabolela who put that uh, premiere for this opportunity and for believing in me and the business that I can actually do something bigger and better. Sakai Eastern Cape is a funayo. Okulumendewe Eastern Cape, upotula ubomi babandu ngukufula amatuba ezo shishino. I am a man who is 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 a man and njema ben chilonga pambeli abantu wana ba ninsi bebenga sebenzi ba fumene ga kula bantu wana ba ukshala ba ukusakiwa inkulu ga kuli nzuzo ku community so iza uputuka indela yog pila Sakai Eastern Cape is in Funai Sebule la gele nyo eba ya le monument e yenzwe ili pondo. Kote wa ge jenge family ya gata tu James Kalata si funuguti si atemba indogba si stralo es. Inze la tina esbona ngayo indogba bano kubege kange legacy ya gata tu mkulu. Bazi singonzo ebandui. So tina si abule la si si tengo si kakulu kota si atemba indogba si stralo es. I suspect. Spearheading the growth and development of the provincial economy, the Eastern Cape Department of Economic Development, Environmental Affairs and Tourism, which forms part of the Eastern Cape Provincial Government, has funded a number of businesses promoting decent employment, sustainable development and local economic participation. We actually started with one, then with two, we're up to 10 schools now registered and then last year the schools that Three of the schools that is on our program that we got the vegetables from the emerging farmers. They got prizes through the Department of Education, which was handed over by the National Coordinator uh, for supporting the project and for supporting emerging farmers. I saw uh, a market arising uh, with the emerging farmers, with the excess uh, vegetables that they got. So uh, compiled a business plan laid it before uh, the door of economic development uh, for funding to support us and uh, in that uh, applied for a processing facility to do chopping, cutting and dicing because I saw that if you're going to open just another fruit and veg, if I may call that then you won't be able to make it. So I saw uh, a market in the chopping, slicing and cutting the processing industry Yeah, and that's what we applied for and that is what we were funded for. So in the beginning it was, it was difficult because uh, yeah, to get into retail stores it, it wasn't easy. Uh, but we just kept on knocking and knocking at the doors. And uh, yeah, our first order that came through was, was with spa and that was five bags of potato chips. They actually asked me uh, what can we do. So I said uh, let's start with five. So the, the spa group said why don't we start with a hundred. They said, no, let's start with five and let's see if you have to work five. And we did the five 10 kg bags. We cut it up, we slice it, we chop it and we dice it for them, put it in bags for them, deliver to them. And then they gave us an order for 20, 20 went 50, 50 went 100. So currently we're doing between 
five to seven hundred bags of potato chips a month. I stay in contact with the Department of uh, Agriculture. As late as last Friday, I phoned the Department of Agriculture again in our metro uh, to say that business is picking up on our side and they should encourage the emerging farmers to stay in contact with us because we can buy whatever they've got. We have got the capacity to buy it. Our appreciation firstly would go out to Almighty God and to Jesus Christ for giving us this opportunity and bestowing the blessing on us and also to the Department of Economic Development for granting us this, 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 this opportunity and, and the funding and for the Elder Committee you know, that believed in us, that took the time and took the effort to come around here to the PSC members that came every month to us to come and check on us, to, to guide us, to you know, to, to encourage us uh, and, and to tell us of opportunities and you know what is out there for us. We are very thankful for that. And uh, without them, our support structure from government and with the emerging farmers, uh, we wouldn't have made it. You know, government is doing for all of us in South Africa. Amakala umzabalazo alwela inkuleko ukuze kubuyele umhlaba kubali nibawo, baya ufumana lo mshaba, panzi kwe nkubo zika kulumende kwe Eastern Cape. E, Ndimu mfane lo Roni Machaya. E, Sifama sisi MK Veterans. Sibula laka kuluku kulumende. Enbeza nendu kulumende tisha fami then. Satibana and local farmers around. So, yes, I was born in Gomo as Pago sixty nine. Nekusha as a Pago hundred and three. Sakai Eastern Cape as a Funayo. Welcome to the live broadcast of the Puma Kappa TV. Any yense kazo kokosho e Eastern Cape East na kuzulunisha legislation. Look and get. Ubona we corona. Ulenze eli kandelo la kaya. Wangi nele kuchatili kukuba. Kubeko ulole. My name is Velile. You are Sam Puma Kappa. And I'm the owner. Namusha njike wakumule kukuba. Ndiyo Eastern Cape Provincial Legislature, Yena Umama Uhelen Souls, August. Ngokup tetoge, Ogobabe ngoko i COVID 19, Oganye Lincholonganeka Bubane, i Corona. Bekfanaka Kuba, Inkulumbuso, Inkuluba Patiswa, i Kale, Yaya, Gui Police Parade, Nago, Bengena Gengugu, i photo shoot, Be Tabata, i photo, Boba B. Ninje Kupela. Kandike, eh, abe kubona eh, um, amalungu yendu yu wisom teto in members of the parliament eh, okanye members of the provincial legislature ngola semzini. Apo kona kubakona uku nikeze lwa kalendo. Gukuke nikeze la eh, kuye i sergeant at arms. Yes, yes, ma'am. <laughs> oh, yes. I think so. Order, Madam Speaker.
and the Premier of the province of the Eastern Cape. I will now ask that all members just stand up for the singing of the national anthem. all of those that have passed due to COVID, all families that have been infected and affected by COVID-19. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Honorable Premiers, it is protocol. May I once again formally recognize your presence and the presence of other MECs and honorable members that is currently watching us through our Microsoft virtual platform. I also acknowledge those that we have invited as guests, our mayors and our speakers, our councillors, our Chapter 9 institutions, as well as our Chapter 10 institutions, the traditional leadership, the judiciary, all stakeholders that usually makes up our guest list. I think it is important that we also acknowledge the community of the Eastern Cape here this morning who is listening on the different platforms that we have, especially the 22 local radio community stations. Today, you will, we will be live on Pumakapa TV, SABC television channels, ETV, and as I have said, our 22 ra community radio stations, our social networks such as our Facebook, Twitter, and our YouTube. Nditi kuni mulweni nonke ek khrupi almala na wonderlijke naam van ons koning Jesus. Honorable members, this is a sitting of the Eastern Cape Provincial Legislature in terms of Rule 7. 
In terms of Rule 17.5 of the Standing Rules amended and adopted by the Rules Committee in 2020, no point of order, question of privilege or question to the Premier shall be allowed once the Premier takes to the podium to commence delivering the State of the Province Address. Honourable Members, before we commence with the business of the day, may I take this opportunity to lay down some ground rules that will assist in facilitating our virtual members. Members are once again reminded that this is a formal sitting of the Legislature and therefore all the standing rules of the Legislature applies. Honourable Secretary, are you now honourable today? Secretary, can you please read the first, the only order of the day? Addressed by the Premier of the Province of the Eastern Cape. Honourable Premier, can you please come and address the Legislature as well as the community of the Eastern Cape? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honourable Speaker. Uh, greetings to you and Deputy Speaker, Judge uh, President of the Eastern Cape and members of Judiciary, Ministers and uh, Deputy Ministers present, amongst us members of the Executive Council, members of the Provincial Legislature, members of the National Parliament and delegates to the NCOP, leadership of the African National Congress, Alliance and other political parties, veterans of our liberation struggle, Ikumkani Zelizwe, Lagoetu, Usitlalo Wendu Yenkos, Nenkosi Zonke, Zepondoletu, Executive Mayors and Mayors leaders of Chapter 9 and Chapter 10 institutions, Usitlalo Moral Regeneration Movement, the Vice Chancellors of our higher education institutions, members of the Diplomatic and the Consular Corps, leadership of our security services, leaders of the religious fraternity, business, labor and civil society, DG, the Secretary of the Legislature, HODs, Municipal Managers, CEOs of our Abadala and Abangimi, Tomlomo, Obege Gleyo, Abadala, but M. Ven West Ching Chan, Sem Vola, Ayawu Tamans, M. Vakoko, Gumiliselege, Itemba, Tau Jonga, Imbali, Yepondo Leto, Sigulewizchingchane Umama Uchalot Macleg. This year marks the 150th anniversary of her birth. She was a true Imbogodo, a leading voice against the patriarchal injustices and all laws that were discriminatory to women. As we continue to engage in the struggle to defeat not only the present storm of our time, the COVID-19 pandemic, but also the scourge of gender-based violence withdraw inspiration from her courage and resilience. Somlomo, si alibona lona ilita eli kanyisayo, neli imbo nagali iso yokuba akusegudala ngu kusipume globo pane we COVID-19. Kodwa, 
se mangla bangla ba. Eyo nanto ibhungu, esenze yona lento longwa ne ya COVID-19. Yeyo kusi subela imi perfumlo imi nizi ya bandu be pondo leitu. Dime apanje na msanje kungu sizi no veluano. Uku vagalisa, uku basi pulikenene mi perfumlo ya mebi belu pondo leitu. Abakabeleyo nga apaya kwishumel na widows and widowers. Even in this august house, it has robbed us of our colleague and one of the most dedicated members of the legislature, Ubawo Honorable Mnedi Sefiltani. In the words of our foremost national poets, U S E K M Kai, which he shared in memory of the victims of S S Mendi troop ship, which sank in the English Channel on the 21st of February 1917. To the Zelegani, Gogo Zingedama. To the Zelegani, Gogo Bafazana. Kufomye kade mini kwa kiwa omye. Kukonzo omye kade ze kupile abanye. Galama zwi siti tutu zelegani. Kukwenje nje kwe tu siti ya kegani. Litateni el kalo labadala kubabati akutlanga lunge shanga. Let us commit to keep the memories of all our fellow citizens who succumbed to COVID-19 in our hearts. Let us now observe a moment of silence in their honor. Thank you very much. Somlomo inzame sizenzile kwezi nyangazi lishumi elinanye sikubisa na nalentolongwan. Today I want to convey our special gratitude to the people of our province for playing their part in the fight against the pandemic. It is through your cooperation and sacrifices that we have managed to decrease the burden of the virus and achieved a recovery rate of over 90%. You are the ones who stayed at home when we asked you to do so. You are the ones who have been wearing masks religiously, and you are the ones who have adhered to physical distancing and all other regulations we introduced. All the adjustments and sacrifices we asked you to make were not easy, but were necessary. They helped us to avoid more deaths in our province. Sikela kananjalo ukuba ninga yegeleli ukusebe nzisana nati egulweni na lopu pane site simo yise. Madam Speaker, now that the virus is subsiding as evidenced by less infections, less deaths and less active cases, it is time to focus on the reconstruction and recovery of our economy. It is also time to deliver the knockout blow to the virus and to accelerate the pursuit of the initial goals we set at the beginning of the sixth term. In this regard, our immediate task is to intensify the work of transforming the economy and creating jobs. We are doing this, Honorable Speaker, against the backdrop of low economic growth, rising unemployment, ongoing budget cuts, and increasing demands for services. Needless to say, business activity was negatively affected by the pandemic which many businesses have having to slow down or shut down their operations. We have responded to this pandemic with a range of short-term business relief packages. This included amending the Job Stimulus Fund to allow for additional support for business in, the, in, in distress. In this regard, an amount of 75 million was approved to augment the budget for this fund. To date, 38 businesses have benefited to the value of 26 million, thus ensuring the retention of 1,538 jobs in the province. As at the 5th of February 2021, the Temporal Employer Employee Relief Scheme benefited 76,692 employers and 763, 470 employees at a value of 3.1 billion. Through the COVID 19 Agriculture Support Disaster Fund, 80.4 million 
was also dispersed to support 1,915 smallholder and communal farmers. The Job Stimulus Fund will remain one of the key instruments for support to distressed businesses in the new financial year. We recognize the short-term intervention are not enough to meet the challenges of growing our economy such that it accommodates all the needs of the people. We therefore need sustainable intervention that will, that will enable us to reconstruct and recover the economy. Accordingly, a number of strategic infrastructure programs aimed at connecting, networking, and rendering our provinces one big construction site are being rolled out. Honorable members, the Economic Reconstruction and Recovery Plan unveiled by the President articulated the most comprehensive and ambitious interventions aimed at reversing the adverse impacts of COVID-19 and positioning the economy to advance qualitative transformation, broadening the manufacturing base through localization and attaining growth levels that surpass the pre-COVID-19 levels. An effective recovery should have an equitable geographic footprint, prioritized network in the industries, and facilitate social compacts. In this regard, the Eastern Cape is assuming its rightful place as a key player in the in infrastructure space. Through our efforts in the Kauleza PMO and the Kuha Development Cooperation, in partnership with national government and Infrastructure South Africa, the province will unveil high-value infrastructure projects that underpin our infrastructure development trajectory. Honorable Speaker, our focus in attracting investment to building and maintaining state properties remains. We have 20,147 immovable assets, which include 7,959 assets in human settlement. The value of our audited assets is 8.1 billion, and the total estimated value is 42 billion. We are going to use this portfolio to transform the property sector. This year, we'll see the completion and handover of the government office park in Malizwai, Komani, and Mount Frey as we consolidate government offices, office precinct strategy in Mount Elif, Ado, and Bisho in partnership with Infrastructure South Africa. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic that negatively impacted many of our plans, we are to review office space needs for Bisho office precinct. I'm happy to announce that the protracted litigation on the Bisho ERF-1, which many of you know as at Amatola San, has been settled. We estimated that this will unlock uh, more than $4 billion in new property development investment to complete the new Bisho government office precinct. A state-of-the-art modernized office has been built for the Department of Home Affairs as part of improving of services to our people, and it is ready to be opened officially. We are pursuing a basket of multi-sectoral priority projects, which includes technology and broadband, infrastructure participation in the rollout of South Africa Connect, elimination of inappropriate structures in schools using alternative technology, the eradication of informal settlement and investing in rural roads and uh, construction of bridges. Honorable Speaker, the availability of water is one of the major challenges facing our province. COVID-19 has exposed the glaring inadequacies of water provision in our province and the risk, health risk associated with the lack of clean, potable water. The water situation is also undermining the economic potential of our province. We continue with our commitment to the water security intervention program, starting with Ndlambe and Makana water security interventions. With respect to the delivery of water, of bulk water infrastructure, several projects are being implemented across the province, particularly through the regional bulk infrastructure grant program, varying threat million. The development of the small harbor and beach front water development project will catalyze the reimagining re of a new coastal city, which will enhance our wild coast development plans. Honorable members, the Umzimvubu multi-purpose water project has been gazetted as a strategic infrastructure project. I'm happy to announce that the technical feasibility studies have been completed and is now at the stage of review to improve affordability. The construction 
of advanced infrastructure will commence before the end of 2021 as we complete the financing options for the multi-billion development. Honorable Speaker, the South African National Road uh, Agency Limited has been a credible partner in our growth and development aspiration in the last decade and our key trade routes have, uh, have improved the phenomenal during this period. We welcome the 16.8 billion investment in our roads budgeted over the next two years with 4.6 billion awarded to 14 projects from Carriedo to Humansdorp, Janssenville to Wolfontaine, King Williamstown, um, uh, augm uh, aug augmentation of the N2, Fort Befort to Alice, Langela, the state of Uzawenziwa, Glonyak Peleo, Sienzo, and Oxiteta, Nezitata Nazo, the Middleback, uh, Moldino, Maletzwai to Lady Grey, and Lady Grey to Buckley East, from Whitlesey to Komani, uh, Dodrech to Indwe, uh, Engobo, and throughout the province. Uh, contractors are on site contributing to building the Eastern Cape we all want. The End to Wild Coast Toll Road project heralds a breakthrough in the development of the Wild Coast Corridor. When the sun rises in Pondoland, the dust and cranes at the 580 meter long Cable Stay Bridge over the Msigaba Gorge is confirming that our dream for balanced geospatial development to reverse apartheid planning will be realized. This year we'll see Sandral concluding the process to find a replacement contractor for the Mtendu Bridge. The next phase will be the construction of the roads from Lingeni to Msikaba Bridge and from Msikaba Bridge to Mtendu Bridge. We are committed to increasing local content and adherence to our local economic development framework by ensuring that construction material is sourced. Maslalen Pansi Tasinga, Boninga Sonye, Sitete, in company as Nigo Msebenz, Mazuaz imitate Okahul Mende, Kokuba, Masiputli se Abandu Abawes and Dao Sebenz Agozo, Stalin Sebenz Swano, Singa Pinde Sibone Landi Bishle, Pia M. Tendu Bridge, or by project is a Kala, Inga Guazu Kala, Genayoba Abandu, Bevala Isides. We are therefore constructing access roads to connect our people to critical services such as health facilities tourism sites and economic centers. We are happy to announce that R61 Road from uh, Bazia to Mtata Airport Junction is in the final stages of procurement and an award is due out shortly by Sandra. Contractors are on site in many of our provincial roads from Jansenville to R63 near Kharaf Reynet, Makanda to Port Alfred, uh, Magusheni to Flagstaff, and uh, Phase 3 to Mbizana, the N2 to CP2 Phase 4 Road, and R61 to Tluleka Game Reserve. Willow Vale to Dwesa, acknowledging that we are prioritizing the road infrastructure to our tourism destination. Since in Dela, in Zimbuendela, I ponder in Unzema, Sine Backlog and Kulu, Kodwa Ezindela, Sis Kanganyao Upper. Zindela as in Zwaz Nins is our Kazwa Ngum Patiswa, where Zendela, in the Lesfana, Nendele Sugaku R sixty one, and Umlem Kwa, Lek Lagbar, in Yuge, Pago Siliki, where Bolo, Tio Kabele Moon, you see Ago N two, Londa Liza Wenzelwa, U twenty kilometers, Jenges Carloska phase one, Colonia Colonia Gamal, Siago, Ungu twenty twenty one, twenty twenty two. Ukonges are some Lomos is a good Kobega, Sulungi Sa Indela, Sasez Lali. Indela zetu zimoshwa na zimvula ze shobo. Sake ne bloko sineti swa lisebe lo mkosi wo kuselo. Senze kube lula uguwa amba kubandu basezi lalini. Through our partnership with the National Department of Public Works and Infrastructure and the South African National Defense Force, we have already completed eight um, of the nine bail bridges from Zazulwana, Matadiel, uh, Nyosana in Port St. John's, from Kobongo, Toha, Bobilake and Fini Bridge in the Christianity district, with Josana and Stakes Parade in Jogabi being the last bridges to, to be constructed. These are the first of the 107 bridges we have submitted as part of 400 bridges to be built countrywide. To deal with the challenges that lead to delays in infrastructure delivery, 
We have appointed Kuha Development Cooperation to assist provincial department, public entities, and municipalities to package projects in order to access funding for socio-economic development. Honorable members, two our established special economic zones, the East London SEZ and Kuha SEZ, continue to be our shining stars for investment attraction and job creation. Through these SEZs, we have been able to attract over 19 billion worth of investment into our province. In the last year, the East London SEZ completed the construction of nine investor facilities and the expansion of three existing facilities. These facilities will create an additional 1,534 manufacturing and services jobs, and these will be operationalized within the next two years. The construction phase created an additional 4,039 construction jobs opportunities between 2019 and 2020. The current year will see an additional six new investor facilities being constructed on the East London SEZ platform, while an additional two investors will be expanding their facility in the zone. One of these will be the Sundale Dairy, which will be building a new cheese factory in the zone. These investors will create 409 additional manufacturing and services uh, jobs, which will be operationalized from 2021 and 2022. The construction phase will lead to the creation of 1,800 construction job opportunities. During the 2020 SOPA Honorable Speaker, we reported a huge investment by a black-owned company, VA Automotive in Berlin, which is operating a blanking facility contracted by Mercedes-Benz South Africa to supply parts for the W2C model, the latest C-Class. VA Automotive is gearing for optimum operation by the month of June as uh, Mercedes-Benz South Africa would have ramped up for the full rollout at the time. The operation is set for a full launch aligned with the launch of W206 model. Similarly, the Kuka Development Cooperation has created 481 operational jobs and 3,951 construction jobs by the third quarter of 2020-2021 financial year. We expect these numbers to increase by end of the fourth quarter. Madam Speaker, we are concerned about the continuing power outages that negatively affect a business. The availability of reliable supply of energy is critical in the construction and recovery of our energy. We have done considerable work on the gas to power program to host additional gas driven power generation of between 1,000 to 3,000 megawatts. We will host the first infrastructure site for the importation of liquefied natural gas. The Kuha Development Cooperation has signed a joint development agreement with Central Energy Fund and Transnet, which will anchor the project. The construction of this infrastructure will catalyze the development of a gas industry in the province and energy intensive investment. We envisage a network of pipelines uh, from the existing Dedisa power plant to other major industrial areas and a new gas to power plants that will, uh, will be built when the Department of Minerals Resor Mineral Resources and Energy invites bidders for the construction of a new gas uh, to power plant. We are looking at other domestic gas opportunities beyond the LNG. In particular, we are we all aware of the discovery of a natural gas and uh, con con condensate through the Brurpalda and the Lupert Wells by the Total Lead Consortium that holds a license for a site that is located near Mosel Bay. We are positioning uh, Kuha as the natural location for the critical offtake uh, projects that will be needed to unlock the development of the offshore projects and thus use the domestic gas for power generation and gas-based industrialization. This is the critical next phase of the work to develop the gas hub at Koha. We note that the project sponsors are negotiating with the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy. And from our perspective, we are ready to support all these processes that will lead to this uh, multi-billion dollar investment, both offshore as well as at the Koha SEZ over the next decade. We will be working with all partners, including relevant 
uh, state-owned companies and the department itself, Department of Mineral Resources and Energy, uh, to make this uh, potential realized. Honorable members, in his book titled Freedom and Development, the late president of Tanzania, uh, Mualimu Julius Nyerere, wrote, and I quote, if real development is to take place, the people have to be involved, close quote. Kungoko ke sibulela abandu basa ingise emtata ngentsebe nziswane kulwa kiwo lwe Wild Coast SZ. The Wild Coast SZ will contribute to the development of economic infrastructure in the eastern part of our province, particularly freight and logistics. Progress to date in the Wild Coast SZ includes completion of the land and topographic surveys, appointment of the bulk and a top infrastructure consultant and fencing contractor. In the previous SOPA, we emphasized the importance of revitalizing our state-owned industrial parks through support from Department of Trade, Industry and Competition and the use of the Provincial Economic Stimulus Fund. An amount of 178.8 million has been allocated for the critical upgrading of infrastructure at these parks. Infrastructure projects have commenced in Komani, Dimbaza, and Volindlela industrial parks. Madam Speaker, the agriculture sector was one of the sectors with a positive growth to the national and the provincial uh, GDP growth levels throughout the pandemic. According to the Gora Tree Review, in the primary sector, agriculture increased um, by 16.5 uh, and citrus yielded uh, 3.4 billion in exports in the last season. With the support of government, black citrus farmers grew by 25% from 2019 to 2020. Our two export apertures, uh, namely the East London red meat and uh, sovereign poultry aperture, recorded an export output of 4,593 tons, valued at 359 million. During uh, the period a period April 2020 to January 2021, and provided an employment for 2,152 workers. We have set aside 332 million for the next financial year towards support for the development of agriculture value chain for major commodities in the province, which encompasses both crops and livestock. Ukubali kaya les kam e oranges got was guvelisa. The orange juice. Kufige ita esa logo kuba ezi industrial park zetu si kwa zufuma na ba kiali zimale ba zovuli feetri senze lwe i juice up singa mane si zinga ngo ukupa i juice si zisa kumazwe apeshe ya i orange juice zimka ne mi sebenzi abantu bakuti funeka abantu bakuti ba kwa zuzi konta up ku kwa zuzi kutale kama tu bem sebenzi honorable members the cannabis plant remains in our radar for economic growth and job creation. The Department of Agriculture and Rural Development, Health and uh, DTIC are developing legislation to commercialize cannabis production. The bill on the use of cannabis for private purposes is currently being considered by the National Assembly. Government is also working on the commercialization of hemp and we are pleased to announce that hemp has been descheduled from the restrictive schedules of the Medicines and Related Substance Act of 1965. And this paves the way for the hemp to be declared as an agricultural crop. Our medium-term strategic goal is to establish five cannabis production uh, co corridors focusing on creating a value chain for medicine, fiber, fuel, and food. With respect to irrigation schemes, our work at Ngoha has resulted in the planting of, 4, of 439 uh, hectares of grain, 100 hectares of beans and 150 hectares of vegetables. We have a working model in the Ngoha irrigation scheme and will build on growing the investment that has attracted the interest of Anglo Gold, Ashanti and Exaro who will contribute towards the creation of 1,277 permanent jobs in the 5,000 hectares which are under irrigation. The 1 billion investment in Dairy and related agriculture production will be the base for agro-processing investment uh, in the Wild Coast SZ. At Kamata, we planted 185 hectares of maize and 150 hectares of vegetables, while at Zanyokwe, we are supporting 
an area of 43 hectares with irrigation scheme for 100 hectares of vegetables. We will leverage the partnership with Infrastructure South Africa to refurbish infrastructure in our irrigation schemes in Christiani, Amatole, and our Tambo districts. Last year, we spoke about the efforts we are doing to employ in making our rural enterprise development um, hubs fully productive. As part of this commitment, we have finalized the commodity diversification at Mkanduli and Mbizana Red Hubs, which have continued to support local markets with super maize, meal, semp, and animal feed. With respect to agro-processing, Mkanduli Red Hub uh, processed uh, 332 tons of grain, while Mbizana processed 325 tons. Furthermore, with respect to grain production, a total of 27,269 hectares has been planted this season with a target yield of four tons per hectare. Amongst the partnership uh, we have established in support of agriculture, ag agricultural initiatives is a partnership with the national government to revive the biofuel initiative. La project to Dallas Tetangayo, Yapaya Kradok. La project Ukulmenda Watenga Kuyo E Farmer as E22. Elungselela yona. Siku ingba kufige itlaisa loko kba la project ngoku ipinde ibuiselo. Siza usebenza kena masebe akapa zeleka yoku nsex ba la project siya ifumana kwa ye ibuyela apo ya ike ya tinge lwakona paya kula mshaba wa sengoba ya temba. We are accelerating the implementation of Magwa Majola Ecotourism Project. We have established governance, increased the market footprint and are in the process of uh, commodity diversification targeting other viable markets. Our province is the lead producer of livestock. We are now the exporter of cattle, sheep, goats, and other to other countries. Uh, our potential to capture world markets requires investment in science and technology to improve quality of our, live sto of our livestock and develop research plan to improve the production and quality of local farmers and producers. 886 animals were also sold from the uh, 15 custom feedlots, which are in Christiani, Oar Tambo, Amatole, Joe Gabi, and Alfred Nzo, generating about 8.3 million in revenue. Madam Speaker, through the district mechanization centers, we have provided cost-effective mechanization services to farmers to enable local communities to increase utilization of the Arab land. In addition to the three mechanization centers, which are Christiani, Owar Tambo, and Joka, the three more centers will be, will, with a budget allocation of 7.9 million, will be established in Sarapadman, Amatole, and Alfred Nzo in partnership with district municipalities and their development agencies. Ngogu si kogele la itrekta, si ibonile inga ke yonika abandu iziku itrekta, Itrekta zika khulmende zikwele longi lizwe zisebandwi. So si vuselela landle laka khulmende yo sebenza, yo kogelela zonge itrekta, zibe winda wei wani, zisuke apa, zi oli melabandu, zenze ngokuwa la shobe kwa kwa kwenzu wangalo nga pambi. Ez nizu nwezi nche, eza senzu wangon khulmende, noba yayi ngon khulmende bo zmeleke, kwa zi afundu ba, si zikwa la sele, si zichonge, si zibuisele, si kwa zo zibuisele, si zamufu sele la gelondo, abandu ba kutiba kalela ugulim, ama si makona, alele, umshabu kebil, khulmende kengu kuya tibani sa konga na kukwen seksba, leo into siya ilungis. Madam Speaker, working with the relevant national departments, we are pursuing the establishment of a veterinary science school at University of Forte. This will transform the animal production, food production, and support the development of local farmers to anchor, uh, to anchor uh, our livestock production and meat markets. In fostering uh, coordination and alignment of financial and non-financial resources towards agricultural support in the province, we have renewed our close relationship with the land bank. Our specific focus we, will be on commercializing of emerging and development of farmers in rural, semi-urban, and urban areas. Together with creation of a broader pool of black entrepreneurial practitioners in the broader agriculture value chain beyond primary Agriculture. Honorable Speaker, our efforts to rebuild the economy will be bolstered by the recovery of the tourism sector. 
We are currently implementing tourism infrastructure projects in our province. The East London Beachfront Development and East London Water World are under construction. The upgrading of beaches at Ndlambe, a local municipality, will start in the next financial year. The six-day hiking trail from Coffee Bay to Port St. John's is under construction and focuses on three sites along the coastal zone uh, nature reserve such as Mgazana, Mpande, and Shuleka. Honorable members, our province has 800 kilometer coastline from which we aim to benefit from several opportunities including fishing, bunkering, oil and gas industry development, coastal and marine tourism, as well as marine transport and manufacturing. Since the approval of the Oceans Economy Master Plan, we have invested 206 million from the stimulus fund to develop for the development of the first 100 hectare of the aquaculture development zone in Koha. Phase one construction started in September last year and we will complete the nove in November uh, 2021. This project is targeted to create 500 construction jobs and 5,600 operational jobs. The Marine Talepia project in one of the national, is one of the national gazetted projects through the Sustainable Infrastructure Development Symposium. The Eastern Cape Rural Development Agency is working with the Mbashe municipality to facilitate the implementation of this project, which has a potential to create 4,700 jobs on aquaculture farms and processing facilities and benefit over 150,000 small-scale farmers who will supply live uh, feedstock for the fish feed. The Oar Tambo District Municipality has procured four refrigerated containers for the four coastal municipalities and fishing gear for small-scale uh, cooperatives. We welcome the decision to relocate the Transnet National Port Authority Head Office to our province as it will contribute towards the growth of our economy. Our ports play an integral part in the facilitation of trade for the country and they contribute immensely to the growth and development of the provincial economy. These ports must provide efficient, cost-effective port services to a number of sectors in the South African economy. Transnet has committed to invest in the East London port to grow volumes and expand the capacity of the port. They will deepen and widen the entrance channel to accommodate light, larger vessels. This will enable the port to support the city's positioning as a manufacturing hub anchored by a strong automotive sector. This commitment will cater for the continuous growth of export volume by Mercedes-Benz South Africa in the next three years. Madam Speaker, we welcome the 16 billion investment by Ford in South Africa. Transnet will invest in the extension and the upgrade of the South Core Rail Corridor which will realize the high logistic rail corridor for the movement of goods between Gauteng and Nelson Mandela Bay. Working with Transnet, we are going to turn the Port Elizabeth, the Port of Port Elizabeth into a mixed-use precinct anchored by the waterfront development. By the end of December 2021, the manganese terminal will be relocated to uh, the Port of Nguha. Transnet will also initiate a process to identify a cargo owning equity partner for the Transnet port terminals at Nguha to drive the transshipment strategy on the volume uplift from Asia, specific, specifically from China. Our railway uh, branch lines are critical to improve trade routes in the province. The branch lines from Kukaus to Blaney and the East London to Mtata are currently being restored. This will enable trans shipment of containers from Port Elizabeth to East London and Mtata. Madam Speaker, with respect to the provision of transport services in the province, we have noted with appreciation that the South African Civil Aviation Authority has granted a Category 5 license to the Mtata Airport, placing the facility in a better footing to attract other airlines. We are, uh, we, 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 this is a sign of growing confidence by business, Hassan. <coughs> Honorable Speaker, the Competition Commission has issued new guidelines that will introduce significant transformation in the automotive industry. This will increase the number of 
authorized body repairers as the OEMs, the original equipment manufacturers, will be required to increase the entry of the new motor body repairers with preference for companies owned by historical disadvantaged individuals, say Transformal Asset. These changes will be beneficial for the government as they will improve the effectiveness of managing and ma maintain government procurement for local economic development. In the year under review, 16.8 billion was spent on Eastern Cape based suppliers and services, service providers. Similarly, 4.1 billion was spent on SMME, while 1.5 billion was spent on designated groups. That is amounting to 15.3% of the total expenditure. Honorable Speaker, last year we announced our plans to roll out the Have I Been Paid system to eight more provincial government departments in order to improve turnaround times for the payment of services of service providers within 30 days. I'm pleased to announce that through the rollout of this system, we have reduced the average turnaround time for the payment of the service providers to 14 days. We are paying special attention to the uh, Department of Health and Education to improve their turnaround time. We still have challenges in those two departments. During this pandemic, the informal sector of the economy was also one of the hardest hit sectors, but remained resilient, particularly spaza shops. To cushion this sector against the COVID-19 hardship, 713 spaza shops applications were approved from the spaza shop scheme, which has saved 850 jobs. Honorable members, the revitalization of our small towns is critical to attract investment, inv investments as part of economic reconstruction and recovery. We are now going to give assistance to a new cohort of small towns such as Whitlisi, Kumcha, Ngamakwe, Ngobo, Mkanduli, and Koukama. These towns will be assisted to improve access to basic services with specific focus on transport hubs, roads, electricity, water, and sanitation underpinned by local, uh, local economic development. I'm also happy to announce that the program that was uh, being implemented but was not completed in Dabangulu local municipality will be included in our small town revitalization work in the 2021-22 financial year. Moving forward, we will continue to support municipalities with small town revitalization, especially those that are spending their uh, MIG, the, their MIG, uh, municipal infrastructure grant and other infrastructure budgets properly. We will use this as an incentive. Uh, we are not going to incentivize people who are not performing. If you return your MIG, why do we give you more money? Why do we have to support you? Because all what we are trying to do as the provincial government is to actually complement the work that we're supposed to be doing. So if municipalities are not spending their money, we're not going to assist them with the small town revitalization program. Madam Speaker, during this pandemic, ICT has enabled government and other sectors of society to operate effectively under the COVID-19 restriction. Through the ICT connectivity, we have been able to coordinate the work of all three spheres of government through virtual platforms. This demonstrates the need for more investment into ICT for improved connectivity. We are pleased to report that as at the end of March this year, we will have a connected 150 sites and this will grow to 600 sites by December 2021 through the, broad, uh, through the broadband project. As we also committed in our previous State of the Province address, we have not left out SMMEs in the implementation of the broadband project. CETA has accredited 114 SMMEs uh, from the province that will be able to participate in the rollout of broadband connectivity. We networks is also a security matter. Abandon about Dal, Abandon Goma, Mabashogin is why you, Bakwas, Gufone, Lama Police, Bakwas, Ufuning Gonzo, Gulman, Kaku Kabanda Bakaula, Ezat Towers, the Fagel Wafo, Abandon Baben networks, 
basenzeleni ngxaki siyacela abantu communities sibajonga abantu abanjalo siba report emapoliseni kuba abantu abanjalo eh zizaphula mthetho through the East London SZ we are also rolling out an ICT service strategy that will see the development of multi purpose ICT hub in addition to this Liquid Telecom South Africa has committed to establish an ICT academy in Intata which will broaden the participation of our people in the broadband connectivity project. Madam Speaker, we are also happy to announce that the two Africa undersea cable will be landing in the Kuha SEZ. This will have two immediate benefits, namely the creation of a focal point for digital transformation as well as the retention of ICT skills that will have a multiplier effect in the Eastern Cape. Madam Speaker, our challenges of youth development include high levels of unemployment and youth and, and young people who are not in education or in training, which impacts on youth employability. Resolving this requires a multifaceted and multi-stakeholder intervention with, with scale and impact. We are responding to this challenge in several ways, informed by, by Iowa Provincial Youth Development Strategy. Our focus in this regard will be on placement of youth in vocational programs, skills development, township and rural youth, development hubs, entrepreneurship and, de and development. This will require us to strengthen and centralize the coordination of youth development in the Office of the Premier, including Isikalo Youth Fund, which will be located in the Office of the Premier with effect from the 1st of April 2021. Having spent uh, much of its inaugural year on planning, uh, in its second year, the Isikalo Fund has done well, dispersing about 16.3 million to support uh, 21 businesses owned by young people across the province. We are also fostering partnership with the private sector. For example, we have entered into an empowerment partnership with Microsoft South Africa. The intention of this uh, partnership is to drive digital transformation in various sectors of the provincial economy, which will lead to the realization of the 2030 vision of an, educated, of an educated citizenry, targeting young people and uh, five SMME in ICT that will be certified as partners by Microsoft. We will improve the coordination of investment in the province, including the corporate social investment. To take forward our investment promotion drive, this year we will hold a provincial investment conference. Zinizige <coughs> e companies, no you bank, abazileyo, but it's now 200 million. Hulmete magazine nema lanayo, Sitibani se sikuwa zukunza ita oso mashishinda basa kula inga kumbi abo basuka kubandu abacha. So siza ukusebenzi sa yonke indwe sinayo kukensekti suba asipulu kane na, na lona alipina ituba elive layo lo kukawlezi sa ukunika matuba ukuputi sabandu abacha. Uba utango olunge na mkeiku asilo utango all. Madam Speaker, as we talk about growing our province uh, together, I want to appreciate the work being done by one of our entrepreneurs in the province, um, Mr. Mava Mkukwana, who has, been, op who has uh, been opening new businesses in many towns of our province through the financial support of the agencies of government, like the, like the Shell fuel station he has just opened in Butterworth at Ebiga this month. He's an example of what happens when people bring their ideas to our agencies like CIFA to finance their ideas into businesses. The uh, Ushel enga apa elenduke e Philippine ukwazi luku sabenza nae e, ngo kaoleza e mwetisa to approve everything because it's a very organized business person, it's a very uh, acute uh, business, bus businessman, acute businessman. Madam Speaker, in the sixth administration, uh, we are also paying attention to the priority area concerning, concerning education, skills, and health. The strategic focus on education is on creating functional schools strengthening administration and management of curriculum deliver delivery and the use of ICT to improve education outcomes. Our work in this regard was negatively affected by the COVID-19 pandemic with learners spending most of their learning time at home. 
Despite all these challenges, we continue we continued to ensure that the delivery of basic education services is provided through our anywhere, anytime learning approach, which was possible and achievable through our intervention in support of home-based learning. 55,000 tablets were issued to all grade 12 learners in quintal one to quintal three schools. Since the beginning of uh, the term 39, uh, new schools have been completed through the national and the provincial department of education as part of advancing uh, science technology and mathematics the science center in Tofimvaba is ready for commissioning and there are already various exhibitors from all over the country planning to use the science promotion space for permanent living exhibition and will occupy space in march 2021 university of northwest and abonba land pipes of Mbabunganga has got to tang and what is inside there is huge and it is going to propel us moving forward as a province and as a country. Even during the lockdown uh, period, the continue, uh, we continued to deliver the school nutrition program with 1.6 million learners fed against the targeted 1.5 million. We are now implementing the three year curriculum recovery strategy, which has been developed to mitigate against the learning losses experience experience during COVID-19. We are also increasing access to early childhood development and we are consolidating the function of the Department of Education. We are also consolidating the function in the Department of Education. The last year, last year due to COVID-19, the number of learners who benefited from the scholar transport program was slightly higher at 124,000. And this year, the department plans to transport 103,000. There were savings. transport. Madam Speaker, given student accommodation, a challenge is faced by our higher institutions of higher learning and, uh, and students. We welcome the investment in student accommodation by the Department of Higher Education and training that saw building of a new student accommodation to yield 2,000 beds at Nelson Mandela uh, University, 2,047 beds, students, uh, 2, student beds at the University of Forte, 3,000 beds at the University of uh, Walter Sisulu, and 1,000 beds at King Institute College. Rhodes University also plans to refurbish its uh, chemical and uh, pharmaceutical science building and is also planning to build an innovation and nanotechnology institute to house the exceptional and cutting edge research work of Professor Tibelo Nukong and her team. Honorable members, I'm happy to announce uh, to this house that the Department of Higher Education and Training will invest 569 million in, build, in building new uh, TVET colleges. Paya Ngunusha, Ian Zwala College. Paya Ekala, Estek Spread, Ian Zwala College. Ikala, Paya E Alwal North, Ian Zwa. Nala College, Inga Paya E Midlands, Campus E Hrafreinet. Ezo College is Zonke, Imali Azo Itibene, Ipago 569 million. Madam Speaker, we indeed are uh, pleased to note uh, that the four in universities in the Eastern Cape are deeply committed to playing their part in building a more sustainable and prosperous province. The four vice chancellors will soon meet with the premier to ensure that research and other initiatives at these universities support the development trajectory and the imperatives of our province. See, if you look at development the logic, we need R&D, we need research and development. Uh, we need empirical evidence for us to understand what we're doing. We're learning from the previous mistakes so we're happy that our universities are on board. Honorable Speaker, let me take this opportunity to commend the class of 2020 for their pers uh, perseverance under extremely difficult 
condition caused by COVID-19. Indeed, that was a monumental task. Despite the national and provincial, and provincial overall decline of the pass rate, the Eastern Cape class of 2020 still achieved better quality of results. Let me also con congratulate our best performed uh, provincial candidates who received the ministerial awards last night, namely o o o Obeis uh, Reinhardt from the Pearson High School, who is also the top achiever in the country. Uh, from Ekolelizwe High, who is also a top achiever in the country in the historical disadvantaged school category. Noba Sikulanda Osikuyu got 68%. Quality that we've come up with has improved, and Sinige uh, Elizwe, the two best students uh, this uh, academic year, the overall from the province, but also the overall from the previously disadvantaged uh, schools from the province. That shows you the work that the province is doing. We are focusing both on quantity but more on quality. We want our kids who must leave school to have a brighter future moving forward. In this point, I would like to acknowledge uh, the leadership provided by the late uh, Temba Kojana as head of education department in the province in recognition of his contribution. The provincial government has decided to name the newly built office complex in Maletswai, that is in Alwal North, after him as Temba Kojana Office Park. Uh, the last time the Siosebens are going to say, I'm going to go to the school, 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 I'm Yafigi COVID ngo March, kange ajonge mva. Utate abandu wana wababege klasi. Nguogu usinige u 90% ebete uza sniga ye. Na siya kase lage kakulupa kuingunu e, yesa skolo sipaya kwa skidi, e, uskidi nle. Madam Speaker, uh, on behalf of the provincial government and the people of the Eastern Cape, let me extend our gratitude to our health workers who have been in the forefront of combating the COVID-19 against all odds. We were faced with a virus that has never surfaced on our shores before. However, we have done well in reducing the burden of, this, of the disease on our lives and livelihoods. We managed to do this through the implementation of our COVID-19 response strategy, which was aimed at containing the virus, investing in sustainable solution, protecting the vulnerable and the poor, and rejuvenating the provincial economy. See, out of this sad thing called COVID, we must have a proper legacy. That's why we had to focus on a lot of work in actually revamping our infrastructure. We invested 590 million in the refurbishment of 67 health facilities, from which 85 wards, uh, or 98%, were to Eastern Cape uh, awards. Uh, 85 awards, or 98%, were to Eastern Cape based contractors. There were 152 local SMME, medium, and micro enterprises that were also subcontracted on various projects to the tune of 47 million. Through this investment, we now have new high care units in the health facility and areas that did not have them before. Bungenayo or ICU high care called Joe Gabi, Ibibangape Frontier, Ekomani. Ngoogu sinezo zbedle, sinezo zbedle, sinezo esiza kileyo paya kweza regions. Zedu. We installed oxygen infrastructure in the uh, health facilities that never had such capacity before. We have seen the bulk oxygen infrastructure that we have done in a number of our regional and district uh, hospitals. We also increased our human resource capacity to meet uh, the added demand that COVID-19 placed on our health system. These and other interventions have led to the reduction of the burden of COVID-19 in our province. Sibonile Apalendo, a capable state, an ethical and a developmental state. What Public Works has done there, delivering these projects within three months to five months is unprecedented. We are going to build on that as we build our infrastructure and uh, unity in that uh, particular department. We are not out of the woods yet, and in fact, we may, we may very well be hit by a third wave. The virus is still dangerous, 
particularly when we still have uh, 544 active cases, which is still lowest in the country. As Madiba said on the day of his release, uh, and I quote, to relax our efforts now would be a mistake which generations to come will not be able to forgive, close quote. Honorable Speaker, the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine has arrived in our province. The vaccine rollout program is underway and started uh, in earnest with all health workers in Nelson Mandela Academic uh, and uh, Livingston hospitals. We are confident that we will vaccinate a minimum of 3.7 million people, which is required for us to achieve our population uh, herd immunity. To achieve this target, we must work together to ensure that our people get vaccinated in order to prevent severe diseases, hospitalization and deaths. Madam Speaker, COVID-19 has demonstrated the importance of implementing the National Health Insurance, which we piloted at our time with Alfred Zot districts. At the moment, NHI readiness intervention are implemented in all districts. Our focus is on strengthening the health system and improving the qualities, quality of service offerings in accordance with norms and standards of health facilities. To this extent, 145 clinics and four health centers qualified as ideal facilities. Honorable Speaker, much as we have been engaged in the fight against COVID-19, we have not lost a focus on the other communicable and non-communicable diseases. In this regard, we are accelerating the implementation of our 1990-90 strategy for HIV or AIDS, TB, cancer, and non-communicable diseases. The Nelson Mandela Academic Hospital is expanding its subspecialist services for oncology. We said so here when we spoke in the last supper. Urology. Urology. Cardiology ear and nose orthopedic and advanced um, imaging and diagnostic services to provide uh, super uh, specialty services for the people of the Eastern Cape. The National Department of Health has uplifted the development of the academic and super spe specialty platform for the Nelson Mandela Academic Hospital to establish a center of excellence for advanced surgical procedures such as cochlear um, implants. Uh, penal reconstruction and advanced cardiology, imaging, and surgical procedures. Nelson Mandela Academic Hospital has successfully implemented the 22 cochlear implants. Uh, also, the, the, the hospital has reconstructed and restored 52 penile amputation and provided ongoing cardiac uh, repairs using modern cardiac intervention. The academic hospital has produced specialist training and produced top specialists and scientists uh, for our province. Ukumbule, Nale Johnson & Johnson, in Nelson Mandela, be part of research. The research unit was also part of that. We've got that and we're building that research unit. Now it is globally recognized because the Johnson & Johnson vaccine that we're now using to inoculate our people, it was also research in our province, in Nelson Mandela. That's why we're happy that uh, soon we will be actually uh, rolling out 
uh, in the factory of Aspen, the manufacturing of this vaccine, Carl Johnson and Johnson, in the uh, next uh, a few quarters to come of this financial year. So we are saying, 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 we Befuni ukuba ngamadoda babuye belahlekelwe lilungu lomzimba elinje ayikomnandi lona kodwa ke silifuma enichiza pha eh siyakwazi ngoku ukuba nceda siyenze asiyikhuthazi lona asingomsebenzi wokwenza lona masiyenze lona kwimeko ezinzima kodwa thina amadoda masikhulela uqanduva sigada abantwana bethu abantwana bethu bangonakali esuthwini siyayicela kakhulu lonto singihulumente masisebenzisane Ulwa luko asi ondo yenkosi. Inkosi nga bandaba gati siku. Ulwa luko intu ya makaya. Ikaya ne kaya kalza kwa lusu mtana. Funeka li kake yege liya zindoko kuba. Liyo ulungi sumtu. Oza uba hikiwa yesha bat. Madam Speaker, the provincial government has noted with concern the backlog experience by our people who need critical and essential assistive devices to improve their functionality and provide them with dig dignity and personal independence. The provincial government will procure new equipment including innovative technology to increase assistive device production. The Department of Health will improve the capacity, uh, its capacity to produce prosthesis and uh, orthotics to re radically reduce the waiting time as well as the backlogs for fitted assistive devices. Madam Speaker, our quest to build the Eastern Cape we want also requires us to focus our, our attention on consolidating the social wage through reliable and quality basic services. Our objective in this area is improving the quality of lives of our people, especially through poverty alleviation and social protection. In the Eastern Cape, we continue to have two out of five people who live below the poverty line, a reality that, has, that was worsened by COVID-19 pandemic. To mitigate this, Honorable Speaker, government introduced the COVID-19 social relief of distress, of distress grant. In our province, as of January 2021, up to 776,882 uh, applications amounting to 271.9 million were approved. I'm also pleased to note that the president in his State of the Nation address has extended the grant. So it's a business on its own. So it just can't be that you have that money in circulation but you don't see SMM is taking the opportunity of that. Koba uh, imali strictly to the consumption side of the economy. Abandu baguti kuli wanenda imali yogususa ikat elele ziku. So ika lelo lika kulmente ukutenseke zindo kukba we push back the frontiers of poverty and EPWP annual target and families from the month of April to December 2020. This support covered a range of specific interventions, including counseling, trauma management, pastoral care, and support to victims of abuse. The Public Service Sector Education and Training Authority is also funding the training of, of, dis, of uh, disabled persons in the public service sector. Madam Speaker, a critical element of service delivery, which is also linked to the fight against poverty, is spatial integration, rural economy, and local government, including human settlement. We are improving the capacity to intervene in, the, in departments and municipalities. We have also developed a municipal support intervention framework that will of the sustainability model for municipalities, namely governance and institutional stability, financial management, public participation, and land development challenges. We have identified the source of, the source of some of the problems that cause instability in our municipalities. And in line with our constitutional mandate, the provincial government will intensify support to municipality to arrest these political and, and uh, capacity-related problems so that municipalities can continue to deliver on their mandate. Oma spala, aiso si kubu se ndlalo. Oma spala, aiso si kubu se politiki. Oma spala, benze lwe ukusa inkonzo ebandui. Si abakela o abandaba kwa maspala. Si abakela o meya. Si abakela makansila. Si abakelo manager, magunga yo lalwa kwa maspala. Ikesa logu wamba si lala, si tunyiwe, li pelile. Si tela o maspala, kwa ye, si office of the premier, u treasury no kogta, ngoku, 
Zaulumon Gazans. Uzazaz, the Kaukwang would care about bowing tone. Uzazaz, the Kaukutua, Ungumea, Ubawing tone. Kunga Biko like Kulugupo, the singer Simbona Yopa, where chaos. Omnyao Hamba will lay nomi, Omnyao Sibella Gom, we ever was against. Goku, Omas Pala Benze, where Abound Bagut, Abound Bagut Abana Mans, Abound Bagut Bakala and Gangel. Ima like to Omas Pala province. No bang o maspala, yenze lwe abandu bakuti, abalinde le yunkonzo, kuhulumende wabo, abam tanda yo, nabama nyuli le, ukuba e kubuti le wenamdu ykwang sae, yenze lwe londo, indektuang o maspal, a yenze long and lalo, yoba kuniko anwe, kubonele lwane, si it To increase the revenue base and financial sustainability of municipalities, we will focus on improving billing systems identified. Municipal and municipal land um, parcels and properties to attract investment to, and embark on a campaign for payment of services by households, business and government institution, uh, or business and government institution. We will also strengthen our collaboration with traditional leaders around the land development and unplanned land use in our peri-urban and rural areas. We are making progress in dealing with backlogs in our electrification program which is prevalent in the rural parts of our province. We have made 777 connections in Buffalo City, 3,600 uh, connections in Amatole, 1,400 connections in Christiani, 1,300 connections in Joe Gabi, 2,800 connections in Owar Tambo, 3,600 connections in Alfred Nzo. In the 2021-2022 financial year, we plan to effect 19,416 connections at a planned cost of 655, 53 million. Madam Speaker, as custodian of customs and culture, our storm was lifted during the alert level one of the national lockdown. Together with our traditional leaders and communities, we were able to prevent loss of lives of initiatives due to the COVID-19. However, we are saddened by the loss of lives uh, in the male customary initiation due to dehydration. Mabanga pupi, abandu anabetwe sutwi nge nga yon ngano. Abandu anabetu, eh, dikata zegi le klabe ndi ambelewe linyi kaya pae dujwa. Umda nangu kwa ke, enga funu sela manzi, kuba esiti, umda nangu funu sela ti, isi kolo kwa luk. Mabanga li tistote, abandu bakuti si kolo kwa luk. Si tela abandu anabetu, bani kwe amanzi, esutwi, kuba, imi ziba, abandu anabeli kaya, ibu tatak. Masia zilondo, masile nzi siko letu ngenkele nembeko nestima, kodwa, masinga binabantu wanabaseka yukupa kutuwa bomelwe nga manze mizimbeni yabu. Last year we made, uh, has since announced the implementation date of the act as the 1st of April 2021. To adapt the new legislation to our province, we are reviewing the provincial legislation by drafting the Eastern Cape Traditional Leadership and Coisent Bill, which will be finalized in the due course of the 2021-2022 financial year. Madam Speaker, one of the acute manifestations of inequality is the continued proliferation of informal settlements, especially in the urban centers of our province, making the realization of spatial just, uh, justice a distant goal. The decline of the fiscus has challenged us to look at innovative solutions of uh, providing housing, especially for low-income households. Honorable Speaker, there is a significant progress that has been uh, that is being made on the eradication of informal settlement, starting in Duncan Village and Greater, pa in Gre and Greater Buffalo City Metro. Another development receiving agent attention is the 22.6 billion Sinati housing development located near Kweleha. This development is expected to yield 24,000 affordable units and 3,600 social units. The provincial government is working with the Buffalo City Metro and uh, Infrastructure South Africa to get the appropriate zoning rights and unlock the bulk infrastructure. Aliko ikaisa logogba umaspala ashali council kwenzo zongi zindo kupro kupasi swe zindo kube kuchigeles. Aban bakuti bafuni zin. I'm happy to announce that the Bay West housing project is at an advanced stage of unlocking the 18 billion development. This is a deliver of an effective partnership of Infrastructure South Africa, the Nelson Mandela Metro, and a prominent black-owned uh, developer which is projected to yield 20,400 affordable units and 5,040 social units. 
all the rights are in place for this development and government is finalizing the bulk infrastructure funding which should be completed by August 2021. Madam Speaker, with respect to the provision of integrated human settlement, we delivered 3,399 houses, units, and 3,162 service sites, while 255 units were rectified. A further 247 housing units were delivered to military veterans. Having been affected by COVID-19 lockdown, as well as performance-related challenges, we are collaborating with municipalities to deliver more housing units with, with the support of the National uh, Department of Human Settlement. We are also busy with the, uh, the repair of houses that were damaged in the recent disaster in our province. Apage, asakanga is in the best of Zak. Genga ale meko ye COVID. Kodwa, ukona, nobumpata, bobu atalala, obu bonagala ya wela sel. Si ela sebege silbege pansgoli solo koz. Uku peniseki sindogogba. Umsebenz, nobuni winyang, and your winyang as a little male than being. Funega, wow sebens, a good title about sebens. A sozium girl, in the Baguna seconds of Gagocle, a sozium girl, in the Baguchiwe Mali, a jigua with Pondo, Elinga Tatin Duen, Elisogola, Elena Banda Bafunizin, Leo Indoyona, is our Puma, not Lolaza. Madam Speaker, building the Eastern Cape we want also entails ensuring that the province is characterized by social cohesion and safe com communities. One of the few good things about the experience of COVID-19 has been the improvement in the levels of security due to lockdown, which necessitated more visibility of law enforcement agencies. The restriction on the sale of alcohol has been significant reduction in the crimes induced by the abuse of alcohol. Indeed, statistics indicate, indicate that an overall 13.3% decrease in the incidence of serious crime in the Eastern Cape in the past 12 months most noticeable decreases were in the following areas. Illegal possession of firearms and ammunition by 19.1%, drug-related offenses by 25%, driving under the influence of alcohol or, drug by, or drugs by 58%, and sexual offenses by 56%. However, non-residential burglaries increased by 5.2%, while truck while hijacking depicted an increase of 46.8%. Madam Speaker, in 2018, this House passed the Eastern Cape Liquor Authority Act, number four of 2018. However, we have noted that due to budgetary constraint, implementation of this important piece of legislation was not rolled out as anticipated. Having considered this omission, the Department of Economic Development, Environmental Affairs and Tourism and the Eastern Cape Liquor Board have worked out a plan of a phased approach to the implementation of this legislation. The MEC will provide more details in this regard. We have also been responding to the parallel pandemic of gender-based violence and femicide in our society, just as we are doing with COVID-19. We are determined to defeat this scourge too. Our intervention included the availability of psychosocial support and everyday uh, heroes at uh, our GBV centers in the province. Furthermore, we are working in, the collab in collaboration with the National Department of Women, Youth, and Persons with Disability on the full implementation of all the pillars of the National Strategy Plan on Gender-Based Violence and, fem and Femicide. The South African Police Service is in the process of establishing a manual and a semi-automated DNA processing system in the Eastern Cape. This will help with uh, the speedy resolution of sexual offenses. In fighting gender-based violence in the province, we welcome the improvement in the turnaround times of the SAPS in investigating cases of gender-based violence, as well as the determ uh, determination of the NPA to ensure that people accused of gender-based uh, violence crimes are charged and kept behind bars. We appreciate the speed in which the magistrate and our courts deal, dealt with the bail application of some of these accused. 
This shows that society is fighting gender-based violence. Each individual must play their part and report these crimes to South African police services. We have to do, we have to do more in this regard. We congratulate General uh, Liz Wenjinga uh, on the extension of her contract as the Eastern Cape uh, Provincial Commissioner uh, for South African Police Services. I have no doubt that under her leadership, the province men and women in blue will continue to do a sterling job that they've demonstrated. Madam Speaker, COVID-19 has negatively affected sport, recreation, arts and culture. To mitigate this, we set aside a budget of 9 million to support 373 distressed artists. We also approved 46 projects for funding to the value of 2.1 million. In promoting our heritage, we will continue with our multilingual program for the development of our languages, including the development of sign language. Last year, we repatriated and reburied the mortal remains of our struggle stalwarts Utadu Vuisilemin at his birthplace in Tomo. We also launched the centenary of Utata Uremond Mshaba, which will be officially closed on the 26th uh, of February. In this funiteta, Kause Eastern Cape, Yasba, Ugi Pondo, Lase South Africa, we continent Yase Africa. Mkulum Sebezebe Fambasi Awenza, Uguza Mugulungi, Sa Indayenzwa, you colonialism up, ne apartheid. So there's a lot to do in that in, as part of nation building and uh, social cohesion. So, if you want to go to Europe, you can 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 go Europe, you can go to Eastern Cape. That department has got a task uh, in this term, sixth term. Because if you want to go to Europe, you can 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 go to Europe. So, you can go to Europe, 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 you can go to Madam Speaker, we are saddened by the loss of the legendary boxing promoter, Ubao Mzima Simguni. Indeed, the province has lost a partner in youth and community development. Madam Speaker, as the Eastern Cape, we also do have an interest in ensuring the birth of a better Africa and a better world. Our partnership with Cordoba province in Argentina, Lower Saxon uh, in the Federal Republic of Germany, the Xiang province in the People's, uh, People, People's Republic of China have continued to advance the priorities of the Eastern Cape in the international arena. We welcome the commencement of the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement on the 1st of January 2021, we are also pleased to note that First Secretary General of the AFCFTA, Mr. Mamke Mene, is a South African who originates from the Eastern Cape, Upper Emakanda. Uh, uh, Our province has already initiated consultation with the Secretariat of the AFCFTA to ensure that the competitive, uh, competitive advantages which our province has in the agricultural sector uh, automotive sector and the ocean's economy are fully integrated into the African economy. Madam Speaker, in order to achieve all the priorities stated above, we have to focus on building a capable, ethical and developmental state. As an, institution, as an institutional foundation, which is critical to, to the task of growing the Eastern Cape we want, we assist with the task of improving the coordination of integrated planning, budgeting, implementation, monitoring and reporting. The district development model is being implemented in our province to ensure vertical and horizontal coordination of spatial referenced uh, planning. The technical hub has been established in Owari Tambo, comprising of engineers, infrastructure specialists, development planners and hub managers that will assist with the rollout to the other district. We acknowledge the role played by the DTM uh, champions deployed by the national and provincial government to district to coordinate development and service delivery. To improve evidence-based planning and decision-making, we have established the Kauleza uh, PMO, which is supporting PMUs at, Co at, at, Co at COCTA and the Department of Public Works in partnership with the Development Bank of, uh, of Southern Africa. 
The COGDA PMU is already working with uh, district and metro municipalities to improve on spending and condi of conditional grants and the completion of infrastructure projects. Another challenge is the or reorientation of the public service towards the imperatives of the developmental state, which we are doing through the institutionalization of compulsory induction programs at all levels. We have also introduced the senior management service pre-entry certificate. Based on the partnership we have with the 15 sector education and training uh, authorities, we will work to syndicate resources in order to continue to improve critical skills for the, pri for the prioritized sectors of the economy. In strengthening the fight against corruption, we have consolidated the anti-corruption forum and, and the council into one body that will be chaired by the, pro by the Premier. Since the passing of the act prohibiting government officials from doing business with government, our province has progressed from 1,272 conflicted officials in 2018-2019 to 421 in 2020-2021. The majority of these remaining 421 officials are in health and education. We are expecting the relevant accounting uh, officers to take action against the remaining the, uh, the remaining officials that are still doing business with government. See, I have the economy in this now, I have to go health. I have to go to the sessional doctors. They are running their private businesses, but they are also employed by government. So as on the finance, it's cool, but as on the economy, it's not the economy, it's not the policy, it's not the law. If you have to go to the house, 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 you have to go to the house. Honorable Speaker, in response to the allegation of corruption on PPE procurement, we acted swiftly on alleged cases that are within our scope and referred them to the Special Investigation Unit uh, for investigation. Our Kumbulba Ufela Wayole Meko, Nessa and Koengo May, Sapala, our president, go away to Sapala president, this is the SIU. If you get the SIU, ESA Benz, say Sneaker is reporting a report, go away investigation about the Kribilay. Yao figi report in a report si act as it creates stronger pambi. Madam Speaker the, and Honorable Members, on behalf of the Eastern Cape Provincial Government and the people of the Eastern Cape Province, the Tata, the Tanda Ugut Lulisa Mazu of Veluano, we kaya la kwa diko, em venu kokushi wa kwalo, gunyana walo, unko su tandi sis with diko. Si Lulisa Amazu of Veluano inga kumbi, gwinkoska ziake, umis kusela diko, a city bonge, maba to dizaleg. Madam Speaker, as I conclude, I wish to thank members of this, uh, uh, the members of the media for the role they played in helping our people to quickly understand the COVID-19 is a serious and a deadly pandemic and for affording us the opportunity to communicate with the people on COVID-19. Siabulela Kakulu, Kenzebe Nziswano, Ebe Sinayo, Kweza Weekly Briefings. Uh, despite its impact on our lives and livelihoods, COVID-19 has also taught us several lessons. This includes the level of collaboration between the private and public sector institutions, where all health facilities even agreed to stop doing uh, elective surgical procedures in order to make beds available for COVID-19 patients. We are grateful and wish to express our gratitude to the social enablers, our media partners, and civil society stakeholders. We want to thank our international partners, the government of Germany, uh, USA, China, Cuba, and UK for their support for COVID-19 resources and expertise. We express our gratitude and appreciation to the Solidarity Fund, which made, it, uh, which made a significant contribution in providing equipment and ventilators for critical ill patients. AFROX who built bulk oxygen and install oxygen retic reticulation at our hospitals. FOSFAG in South Africa, uh, who established our fully equipped field hospital. The ISUS, who provided logistics and warehousing of PPE inventory. The World Health Organization, uh, the PEPFA and the USAID, who provided experts on data analysis, uh, epidemiology and surveillance expertise and the presidency, national department, and metro and local governments which provided direct support 
uh, resources and technical knowledge to ensure that the province is able to respond, intervene, and reduce new infections, uh, provide hospital services, and reduce COVID-19 related deaths. It is also during this period that we saw the emergence of the Nelson Mandela University Medical School, led by late Professor Lungile Pepeta, to whom we pay homage for his contribution in the fight against COVID-19. COVID-19 also compelled us to take a quantum leap from normal to automated system learning uh, between uh, countries. Centrality of the state, the realization that the dream of universal healthcare might be possible after all. The importance of our primary healthcare approach as well as the importance of social compacting and integration. Before COVID-19, the issue of DDM was largely hypothetical at best, but COVID-19 has forced us to intensify the DDM in managing government programs in an integrated way and has helped us to give meaning to integration and coordination, especially with the establishment of coordination, of coordination platforms. We definitely need to sustain this approach beyond COVID-19. Honorable Speaker, difficult times call for maximum unity and common purpose to turn adver adversity to, into victory. The Eastern Cape has the potential to rise again from the ashes of COVID-19, to be a leader of, a devel of development, to be a leader in development. Once again, we call upon the people of our province to continue adhering to wearing of masks, physical distancing, regular washing of hands, and avoiding a large gatherings. Sikela omaspala balungi se imitu imbi amans. Amatole owar tam. Abandu baguti klasiti mabashambe izanja. Mabawa fumane amans. Ez tepin kabefuna amans. Si sonde legepa. Kuza unyanzele gukulmende we pondo. Ayege uteta eku ute kwaza. Sibe pa kufuchane. Kungenja la suzu bugela abandu baguti. Bechugunyezwa. Bechugunyeze lo amalunge lo abo agumka kosiseko. Si chongi. We have the potential to overcome the moral decay that continues to manifest itself as a gender-based violence and femicide, crime, corruption, and fraud. In partnership with traditional leaders, the moral regeneration movement and civil society, we shall embark on a campaign to restore the family as the basic unit of society and to address the root cause of social ills in our society. We are calling on, uh, we are calling on our people to work the land ignite the spirit of self-reliance, foster sus sustainable livelihood, and to ensure food security. We call upon all our people to pay for services rendered by municipalities. This will help to sustain the provision of services, uh, services and to help the indigent population that depends on the state institution for their survival. We call on the business sector, labor, civil society, and government to deepen our social contract and collaboration that will help us to grow and transform the Eastern Cape. Our towns are filthy, which therefore calls upon all of us to step up measures to clean our towns and our neighborhoods. Keep our towns and communities clean is for our own well-being. Keeping our towns and communities clean is for our own well-being, and this campaign will also help in building social cohesion, patriotism, and a sense of a national duty. I call upon public servants in all spheres of government to embrace a new culture characterized by service, timely execution, and discipline of getting things done. I call upon our public servants in all spheres of government to embrace a new culture characterized by service, timely execution, and the discipline of getting things done. Bonga abate shwe ya kuhulmente. Bate shelo usebenza. Bamkele. Abate shelo ngwa kwa mkele. Basebenz. Bate shelo usebenza. Bamkele. Uhulmente wenze lwe abant. Ape Eastern Cape we've got 128,000 people abate shwe. Abasebenze luhulmente. We've got 6.7 million. Yabando abate lipanga panja balende le inkonzo. Aba bakte shwe ngu kulu mende, mabenzu msebenzu wabo. Ewe, ama lunga loba sebenza balulegi. Kwa ye, 
ayilunganga lento yoba abasebenzi xa bakhalazela amalungelo wabo bahambe be destroyer infrastructure ka hulumende abantu abana manzi kwindawo ezininzi kuba infrastructure ka hulumende ko amathone ibi destroy ngabasebenzi bekhalazela amalungelo wabo cingelani aba bantu balindele amanzi bahlela emizini yabo balindele inkonzo zika hulumende uhulumende makamameli izikhalazo zabasebenzi kusetyenziswane kufunyanwe isombululo akunalo ilungelo lokubhukuqa uhulumende ngoba udunge inzolo uthise indlela itha ikilometer yetha enye is about 15 million rands 1 kilometer yetha xa uvuka uyoyithisa latha uyiza uphinde kuyotsalwa imali kotishara nama nesi no clerk abantu abasebenzela uhulumende khona ukuze uhulumende ayokwenza latha yingxaki le siyacela abantu bakude bakhe bakhulela uqandu makukhalazwe nakulandela imigaqo ekhoyo elilizwe labeke imithetho elishixa yokuqinisekisa abasebenzi namalungelo abo akhuselekile mayekwe lento yoba abantu badunga dunge bachise bachitha chithi into esele zakhiwe ezakhiwe ngemali engekhoyo ngemali yabarhafu belilizwe honorable speaker people of the eastern cape uh, as Charlotte Maxike put it, and I quote, this uh, work is not for yourselves. Kill that spirit of yourself and do not live above your people, but live with them. If you can rise, bring someone with you as you rise. And Goska Cole, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. There's the clapping premier from the from the house virtually. <laughs> Thank you so much, honourable members. You see, I was told to put this back on. <laughs> Thank you, honourable Ponga. Honourable Ponga. Thank you. Thank you, honourable Ponga. I can hear you. Honourable members. Uh, this concludes the business for the day and the house will adjourn until quarter past two on Wednesday the 3rd of March 2021 virtually. The house is therefore adjourned. And that was the conclusion of the matter for today. The State of the Province Address by the Honorable Premier Mr. Lubabala Oscar Mabuyane. And the speaker, Umama Uhelen Sols August, uh, saluting to the Premier, and they are, they are now leaving the house. Since I speak, as okay, Apu Kukuba is our Pinda Ishalinina Lendu, Uguze is the Benokota, S. Speech, Bessie Tatakan, I'm Sanje, Gu Kulumbus in Kuluba Patiswa, or Mr. Oscar Lubabalo Mambuyane. Inga puma la mais ite tukuti kukikiwe. And there you see them exit, exiting the house. U speaker, u premier. Kwa kunyana no bala, the secretary of the Eastern Cape Provincial Legislature, yena u mama u noma wetu ngakani. Mr. Manda Nduna, the provincial photographer from the office of the Premier, and the uh, members of the media, uh, one from e Avusa, uh, rather, e Daily Dispatch, and the members of the media are here. And there they are, taking the photo there with the background of the Eastern Cape Provincial Legislature banner. Now another photo shoot opportunity. The Premier with the Sergeant at Arms, Yena Tembekile, Batim Ngukaba Kabambizayo, or Mr. Tembekile Mzansi, together with the Unobala, U Namawetu Nakani.
and now is joined by the member of the media. That gentleman there is from Algoa FM. You can see that the background there, the Algoa FM. That shows you that um, in the precinct of the Eastern Cape Provincial Legislature, we have um, the most important people that would be participating here. And uh, uh, that is a member of the media. Uh, you'll discover that there are a lot of other members of the media as uh, the whole contingent of the Pumakapa TV is here. O Premier Ke Zinin Zindo Tas Dagaka Esuka Kumtimbi Wizindu Angene Gwizim Bilo Angene Gukuselego Kagata Yakati, Begano Shiam Timbi, Uwe Covid nineteen O Pupane Ekwanakale Kokuba Hulmende Willi Lempumakoloni Ukule Wali Gangata Uguze Abenokwazu Kubisana Neli and now the premier taking a photo with the speaker of the house of the Eastern Cape Provincial Legislature, Helen Sauce August, joined by the Director General of the Eastern Cape, Mr. Bulelo Sogoni, sharing a light moment there. Kantike ngapande uno tingba kuba kukwele icon. Kabandu kupela abe fanele koko babi ze apa kuindu yobi somteto. It's so quiet outside. A kuko bandu ba piti zelayo. Kabandu kupela ek fanele kile oko ba babe kulenda wo. Kantike naba party swa jengba buso uvile galklesha u. Some lomo or Helen Sol's August Kakunyano Premier Eba Bulisa Aba Party Swa na members of the provincial legislature Zi Kaka Mshelene Kulenlu Gobu Kaka Kaka Balamatlesha Kokin Sekleo Bakfumene Gonge Ebe Fan Nekokba Bayak Fumana Oksale Ngoku in the Kokba Kwenzu and Duni Nangoko or Premier Atewak T the members of the media a very friendly leader to the media and who acknowledges and knows very well what the role the media plays in society shaping the opinion and also shaping the narrative out there. Sele pumile kengu kupremia kwa senduini. Sele pumile kwa sefoya. He is outside taking a photo there with the uh, member of the media. That, that's, that's beautiful. All has been said and done. Nago Premier Sele Kwela Gengoku a question to Sakem. Golo Sloboke, it had a good thing, Zongiz in those details at Koshele Swangan Lila Yio, and everything is done, and I hope that you have enjoyed. And goodbye, and God bless.